What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Be a part of Ninja Nation. We have the best baseball subscribers on YouTube and need you on board. So hit subscribe, and without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Andrew Abbott, who had five Ks in three and a third innings, giving up four runs. He had these fastballs and changeup. And he faced Marcus Stroman, who had two Ks in three innings, but gave up six runs. He did have this nasty sinker and slider, but has definitely been in a slump his last few starts. Kyle Gibson had five Ks in six innings, giving up one run, and had this wicked changeup and sweeper. And he faced Chris Bassett, who had seven strikeouts in six innings, giving up four runs. He had this two-seamer that broke 18 inches to the plate, as well as this slow curveball and changeup. J.P. France had six Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs, and had these sliders, curveballs, and changeups. Jacob Junis had three Ks in three innings, giving up one hit, and had these changeups and fastball. Corbin Burns had five Ks in six innings, giving up two runs, and had this nasty changeup, cutters, and curveball. He faced Jake Irvin, who had two Ks in five and a third innings, giving up two runs, and had these curveballs and got a sword on one. Edward Cabrera had three Ks in three innings, but gave up six walks, which really shortened his outing. When he was near the zone, he had some filthy stuff. I mean, look at the movement on these change-ups at that velo. That's sick, and he also had these nasty curveballs. His stuff is really filthy, but his command is somewhat messy. He faced Ty Walker, who had four Ks in six and two-thirds innings, giving up two runs, and had these splitters. Charlie Effin Morton had eight Ks in six innings, giving up three runs. And of course, he had these sick curveballs, including this curveball that had 3,278 RPMs. He faced off against Chase Silseth, who had this elevated 97 mile an hour heater, and gave up one run in five innings with four strikeouts. Seth Lugo was really good with nine Ks in seven innings, giving up two earned runs, and had these fastballs and curveballs up to 3,365 RPMs. He faced Austin Gomber, who had 5 Ks in 6 innings, giving up 2 runs, and had this dirty knuckle curve. Nick Pavetta had the most strikeouts yesterday, with 10 Ks in 7 and a third innings, giving up 3 runs. He got Ks on his fastballs, his sliders, and this beautiful curveball. Look at the drop on that. Pavetta battled against George Kirby, who had 7 Ks in 5 innings, giving up 1 run. Kirby had these upper 90s fastballs, this beautiful front door two-seamer. Look at that. I love front door two-seamers. And he also had these dirty splitters. And here's an overlay of Kirby's splitter and fastball. And you can see why as a hitter, you would swing at that splitter, because it tracks that fastball really well. Johnny Brito had four Ks in four innings, giving up five runs and had this curveball. And he faced yesterday's filthiest starting pitcher of the day, Tyler Glasnow. Glasnow had eight Ks in seven innings, giving up only one run. He, of course, had his blazing fastballs, but the real story of this game was his slider. He threw his slider a ton. He threw 40% sliders this game and got nine whiffs on his slider. For the season, he has a 43% whiff rate on that pitch. Of course, he also worked in some curveballs, and he has a 51.5% whiff rate on that curveball this season. And here's an overlay of Glasnow's fastball and curveball, and you can see why he has that high a whiff rate on that curveball. It tunnels so well with that fastball, and then those pitches head off in different directions. Good luck. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Tom Cosgrove had these sliders. Brian Abreu had these nasty sliders. Andres Munoz had this filthy slider. Danny Palencia had this elevated heat and this back foot slider. Ryan Presley had this buzzsaw 3,350 RPM curveball. And look what he does to Miles Straw with that. A total knee buckler. Cue the saxophone. Alexis Diaz had this dirty slider. Camilo Duvall had this 99 mile an hour heater. From this home plate view, you can see how fast your reaction time has to be on it, which perfectly sets up his sliders because you have to react so quickly. And he got Ks on these sliders. Nate Pearson had these heaters. Matt Brash had this amazing slider that got a swing midway into the opposite batter's box. Holy crap. 
Yu Chang kind of looks like a blindfolded kid swinging in a pinata. Kyle Finnegan had this nasty splitter. Pierce Johnson had these curveballs and fastballs. Mark Leiter had these nasty splitters. Felix Bautista had this diesel and splitters. And here's an overlay of Bautista's 102 mile an hour fastball with a 90 mile an hour splitter. And you can see what makes Bautista perhaps the most feared closer in baseball. Reynaldo Lopez was outstanding with his 101 mile an hour heater and these sliders. And my filthiest pitch from a reliever yesterday was this rising slider from Tyler Rogers. Got several views of this and they are all filthy. This pitch kind of defies physics. Okay, maybe physics is actually the reason these pitches do that. But here's an overlay of Roger's fastball and slider, and you can see how much more his slider rises than his fastball. Completely opposite the movement of almost every other pitcher in baseball. And because you're subscribed to this channel, here is Tyler Rogers' slider grip. Of course, if you're going to throw this, remember to throw it from about five inches off the ground. Same thing with, with the slider. I just want it to spin the other way on this axis, just like this. Now it's not like that at all, but that's what I think about. <laughs> and then, so, and then I go to the two seam grip once I get into the game and just kind of let that, let it take over. But I never, I never think about arm slot or release point. It's all about how I'm spinning the ball is, is all I think about. And then, uh, the slider grip, so I on Major League Baseballs, I like to put my thumb right on the major, the, the, the middle knuckle of the thumb. I put it right on the major, and then I let the, my fingers just kind of uh, take over from there. So it's not, it's not your conventional slider grip here. It's mm. kind of tilted a little bit. And then same thing, I just try and get it to spin just like that just on this axis here. Week. That's right, welcome back to Dong of the Week, where we're bringing glory back to batting. We're starting off here, 3-2, bottom of the ninth, two outs. Burleson thinks he's got a walk-off dong, and Mike Talkman perfectly times this and has a reverse walk-off dong snatch. An incredible play by Talkman. And if that name rings a bell, it might be because Talkman robbed Pujols of a walk-off dong a couple years back with an epic play, and then two weeks later, he robs Soto here of this game-saving dong snatch in the seventh. Talkman, public enemy number one against important dongs. Next, we're checking out the Atlanta Juice Heads once again, where Austin Riley has the long dong of the week with this 463-foot dong. This Braves team is something else. It appears for now Acuna has handed the long dong legend moniker to Austin Riley because he's now been on this a bunch of times in a row. But although that might have technically been the longest dong of the week, the long dong of the week goes to Bobby Witt Jr. for this walk-off grand slam dong. Witt was actually dong robbed by the umps earlier in the game for this ball that was initially called a homer. Then later on had a huge RBI in the game and then polishes it off with this game-winning walk-off grand slam dong. And that's your dong of the week. And now, the Pitching Ninja moment of zen. Welcome back, Angel Hernandez. It's almost like he didn't skip a beat. Alex Call was tagged about, what, five feet from second base? And somehow, Angel missed it. Yep, Angel missed a call because the tag didn't miss Call. That sentence is really confusing. And I loved him staring up at the replay, hoping he got this call right. Bless his cotton socks. On second thought, Yu Chang might have been using Angel Hernandez's eyes on that Matt Brash pitch. What is up everybody? My picks of the day today are three leg parlay. I'm gonna start out with Carlos Rodon for six Ks or more, then take Justin Steele for six Ks or more, and top it off with Freddie Peralta for six Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 